This video will be discussing an important event in the Philippine history, the root of the Philippine Revolution, the Cavite Mutiny. We will be citing the two versions of this event, the Filipino version of Pardo de Tavera versus the Spanish version of Jose Montero y Vidal. We will be asking three questions to seek truth behind that bloody historic moment where Filipino shones bravery to fight for their rights before anything else. Uh, let us have a proper introduction and opening statement. I'm Alina Zariz Vinson. I am a representative of the Spanish version. I am Manuel Baran, who stands from Spanish version. Hi everyone, I am Richelle Yanto from the stand of Spanish version. Presenting the Spanish version debaters. I would like to introduce myself. My name is General Simonimo. I am Melody Libanez, representative from the Filipino version. Good day to everyone. I am Rika Dumandan from the stand of Filipino version. The pride of the nation, the Filipino version debaters. Let us ready for the opening statement. The Cavite mutiny in 1872 would be the stepping stone of courage to speak up and basis of bravery to fight for our identity as Filipinos. During the historic events, there's a lot of untold stories. That's why I'm preaching here for the clarification and states our evidences according to the account of Pardo de Tavera that was proven more relevant that consists of the most factual data in the Haviti mutiny. Now let us hear the opening statement of the Spanish version. I would not agree more, for such stories are of history in realistic viewpoints of Cavite mutiny. The Spanish account of Jose Montero Y. Vidal would be more concise. He had enough evidences that was supported by Gregorio Saide and Sonia Saide. The goal of the colonizers was to bring a new economical system. To state my points, the Spanish government implemented a draconian policy to build a new system of living in the Philippines. Mr. Paran just mentioned the draconian policy. Now, state your insights about the draconian policy. Starting off the Filipino version. This is the reason why it all started. After the law was implemented, it really changed the vision of our ancestors. This policy was implemented by Governor Esquerdo in 1872. It was really against by the Filipinos, but they are speechless. This application puts the faith a lot of Filipinos, specifically the Cavitanians of their miserable living, abolishing the rights and privileges. Replacement of the position and oblique to pay the tax. This policy brought extensive crisis to the workers that was really became the factor of the hatred and rebellion. Spanish version will give a chance to speak about the policy. This is the systematic way of living in the Spanish government called caste system, where there's a classification of people according to their talents and economic backgrounds. Now this brought in the Philippines under the Spain colonizers that was labeled in the peninsularis or the highest rank in the society and the Filipinos are Indians, considered the low class poor and laborers. Was the draconian policy became helpful to the Filipinos? Why or why not? Philippine version state your opinion. To clarify my arguments, our ancestors done a lot of services in the arsenal. Isn't that enough to maintain their position? Our elders forced to work because of the strict implemented laws that can lead them to scat. They only besought for the stand not to remove their privilege especially in the school of arts and trades because that's the only thing they can obtain learning it's very unrighteous to see someone who spread the christianity but doesn't apply the teaching to themselves spanish might be knowledgeable but they use us to take advantage to build a power 
This draconian policy is not for us. This is for Spanish satisfaction. The Spanish government really takes advantage to our ancestors. Spanish version, defend your answers. Our stand is we need an omniscient workers that are physically and mentally stable for the position, not an Indios who's ignorant. Low class must contribute to the taxes as part of the agreement. Perchance, this could help for the betterment of the economy. Well, I guess you don't understand because Indios know nothing but being primitive. Always remember, we already gave favor to the Filipino priest. We implemented the secularization to put native clergies in much higher position in the church. Ms. Nagpulu just mentioned the secularization. Now, how does this connect to the Gumborza priests and to its role in the Cavite mutiny? Spanish version, it's your time to speak your arguments. Based on the account of Jose Montero Evidal, these three priests are proven guilty as the leaders of the attempt of Indios to overthrow the Spanish government. Fathers Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora were tried in a court martial and sentenced to be executed in Bagumbay. The execution set as a threat to all the Indios and native priests who will attempt to rebel in the Spanish government. Now let us hear the stand of the Filipino version. The Spanish clergy connected the priest to the mutiny as part of conspiracy to stifle the movement of certain to have their own parishes instead of being assistance to the regular priors. February 17 of 1872 marked the biggest loss of the martyr press. Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Asinto Zamora. They were executed due to false accusation of treason and sedition. Taking a supposed active role in the This judgment became a cause of their death. The garot in the public was witnessed by the Cavitenios. For the overall conclusion, the Spanish version will be first. Let your voice be heard. For the conclusion of the Spanish version, it is an attempt of the Indios to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. The movement became unsuccessful because of the event. A celebration of the peace of the Virgin in the district of Sampaloc. The event came with some fireworks display. The Capitanius mistook this as the signal to commence to attack. 200 men were slain by Sergeant La Madrid, attacked Spanish officers at sites and seized their cells Guerdo. Upon learning the attack, ordered reinforcement of the Spanish forces in Cavite to quell the revolt. The revolution was easily crushed when Manilenios, who were expected to eat the Capitanios, did not arrive. So, it is a simple mutiny by a native Filipino soldiers and laborers. A pricing of military personnel of Fort San Felipe, in the Spanish arsenal in Cavite, Philippines on January 20, 1872. Around 200 soldiers rose up in the belief that it would elevate on national uprising. The mutiny was unsuccessful and the government soldiers executed many by the participants. And some Filipino lawyers were suspended and sentenced in life imprisonment in Marianas Island. And the Spanish government restricted and reprained the Filipino citizens. During that time, Filipinos faced more hardship and cruelty as an exchange of their opposition. That is the end of our debate. Now you hear the both stories of the Cavite mutiny. We'll give the decision into your hands, which is more relevant and believable. But always remember to look for the primary and secondary sources for a much effective criticism. Again, this is Dominic Polenweco, your host for this debate, leaving your discussion. Your belief reflects to your identity.